So, hey, Glenn, thanks for being here with us. Thanks for having me. I'm not sharing screens, Becca, so you may just have to disappear, but instead I'm sharing myself. Oh, excellent. Uh, this, this is a story from my own life. Uh, before I get started, a few caveats. Uh, I love oral tradition. I believe our stories are powerful and meant to be shared. Uh, also, I reserve the right to contradict myself. Anything I say today, I can say the opposite in the future. I may even contradict myself during the next 10 minutes. That's okay. Uh, that's how I believe that people learn and grow by expressing different opinions and exploring different viewpoints. Uh, third caveat, I work at a small company. By small, I mean around 200 employees. I think the rules are a little different in this scenario. However, I've worked at big tech as well and I'll make uh, comparisons where appropriate. Uh, and the fourth caveat is, this is a tale of doing a lot of things wrong. Uh, it's extremely abbreviated, obviously, so sit back and enjoy, and it's okay to laugh. Uh, chapter one, becoming an engineering manager. Uh, I was a 10 plus year independent contributor, and by independent contributor, I mean I was a tech worker that didn't manage any people. Um, in early 19, in early 2019, I was actively looking for another job but then I put that on hold due to some personal issues. Uh, summer 2019, my manager left the company and this was completely unexpected. Uh, in a small family owned company, it's not very much org chart that doesn't belong to family members. So I had no expectations for a promotion ever while I stayed at this company. Uh, so at that moment, that summer, everything was up in the air. Uh, I was sort of at the helm as a senior IT team member. Um, and after a few days, one of the company owners gave me a two hour interview and I was offered the position as the new software development manager. So I considered my options. On one hand, I don't take the I don't take the position. I would keep steadying the ship, uh, basically running everything. A new manager arrives in six to eight weeks. I spend the next three months training them. Then probably the next year covering different management aspects till they really get their feet on the ground. Uh, maybe they turn out to be psycho. Uh, and for me, I see no material benefits. And by that, I mean nothing in my wallet or on my resume. Consider my second option was I take the role. I keep steadying the ship, basically running everything. I still spend the next year covering all the management aspects. And I do see some material benefits, both in my wallet and on my resume. I chose option two. Some observations. In general, the practice of promoting the best or most senior software engineers to managers is flawed. Good software engineers don't necessarily make good managers. Second, uh, I didn't have a career plan to move into management. Uh, making that move for the good of the team is very noble but it's not a good way to move through your career. Uh, third observation, if you are planning and preparing yourself for a transition to engineering management, you should carefully consider the circumstances and environment when you make that move. Is the company supportive? Are there other managers available to mentor and train you? At the time, I didn't know all the reasons why my manager left, but I soon found out. And, uh, kind of final observation at this phase, um, back to small company versus uh, large company. You know, in a small company, if you're, if you're in a small company, there's, in my opinion, a very real uh, kind of pay ceiling between the developer level and the management level. And that's because in that situation, the manager set the salaries, but 
if you're in a large company, I think that the career track for an independent contributor is much, uh, much less bounded. Uh, and there are, you know, pay level pay levels progressing into senior and principal that will definitely exceed uh, the salary of a uh, new manager. Chapter two, my time as a new manager. My calendar was almost immediately filled up with meetings. On our JIRA board, I still had tickets open in my name, big tickets and the most important project. And I had to hire my replacement and train them. The pressure on the project was massive. So I became manager by day, developer by night. The other uh, aspect is other challenge or aspect as a new manager, I wasn't anticipated. anticipating was how isolated I would feel. Uh, I was one of for a group of four developers who'd worked closely together for five plus years. There were two of us from Canada, two of us from Russia, um, and we were tight. You know, together we'd been through three marriages, four babies, one life-threatening medical diagnosis, deaths of close family members. My daughter's spoken to their daughter over Zoom on Saturday morning to practice English. We share adventures and pictures on the weekend. And we, among us, during that five years, we had a no secrets policy. I don't know if you have that on your team, but it's like, if any one of us heard something, no matter how damaging it could be to any of us, we had to share it. That was our rule. But all of a sudden, I had access to way more information than the rest of the team. And I couldn't tell any of them. And I just felt I was no longer the same. Uh, chapter three, getting settled in as a manager. I worked through my manager by day, developer by night problems. My body helped with that by giving me some stress related health conditions and that really forced me to tone it down and uh, find other ways to, to do things. And over time, I did find some things that really work and there are some things that I still need help with. Uh, first, some things that make work go smoothly. Uh, in this type of role, I find you have to communicate, communicate, communicate. For almost everything, I strive for transparency as soon as possible. And I've gone into several meetings and said to my family, well, I might not have a job at the end of this one. I." discover something that makes my team look really bad or someone dropped the ball on something I didn't know about or maybe I did sort of know but just didn't realize how bad it is. A couple of weeks ago, I went into a meeting with all the company executives and shared some bad news of this nature. At the end of the discussion, one of the vice presidents actually thanked me and said uh, they'd never had visibility into what IT does like this. The second thing that's worked really well for me is uh, I began drawing a lot of pictures. If I can't represent something visually, then I don't understand it. I'm okay being the stupidest person in the room, asking all those questions. Whenever something explains something, I'm drawing it out at the same time. And I'm often, and I do this because I'm often going back and forth between uh, kind of, uh, business managers and back to my uh, technical developers and trying to translate and communicate between them. So when I have a picture, it just clarifies it for everyone. And my team has started getting on me and making rules for me about where I put my drawings. They want access to all of them. Uh, the third thing that's really been helping me is filtering out the noise so that I can focus on what's most important. There's just so much busyness coming at me in terms of communication and problems and requests. Uh, so you kind of have to figure out what works for you here. Maybe it's uh, vigorous exercise in the morning and taking a walk at lunch. I was trying to learn meditation in January, as you may recall from the monthly challenge. 
um, with mixed success. Overall, I've made peace uh, with the fact that I can't do everything. I can't even reply to every message or email. Some issues I'm still struggling with. One is energy management. Like uh, some of the re some of you in this group, I'm extremely introverted. I lived well for so many years with just myself, some code, music, snacks for hours a day. Uh, speaking to people can get so tiring. Uh, some days I get off like a six hour block of meetings and I'm fried, I just fall on the floor or I go pet the goats. Uh, second thing I still struggle with is how and what to delegate. I'm caught in the center of every project and it's something I need to work on. And the third thing is that sometimes my, my close teammates still see me as a friend and that's a struggle for me. I'm paid not to be their friend. And I fear that there may come a point in time in the future where that becomes uh, painfully obvious. So my general advice for any of you considering a move to uh, engineering management, uh, first, make a career plan. Uh, we had a brown bag on that uh, a few months ago by Ken Lin, and she mentioned this book, Designing Your Life, and I bought it. Uh, consider your personality type. What role are you suited for? What size company do you thrive in? If you're better uh, at smaller companies, uh, you may need uh, to consider a management position in order to progress. Uh, second piece of general advice, uh, consider the environment. Will the company be supportive of your learning? Is there a management training program or mentorship? Uh, third piece of advice, if you are planning and preparing a transition to management, I recommend uh, it's nice to get promoted from within, uh, within the company, but take over a different team than the one you're a member of. Uh, your reputation at the company should garner you the respect you need, but you don't have to kind of manage those uh, delicate relationships of, of shifting from a team member to a manager that I've been dealing with. Um, finally, chaos is opportunity. Never let a serious crisis go to waste. If you're up for it, the quickest way to accelerate your career is to show that you can own a problem and bring it under control. Anyway, that's my story. It's been very helpful going through this exercise and reflecting on my experience. Uh, thank you. <laughs>